Quilla Dean Tyler here, and this speech is titled Acres of Diamonds, written by Russell Herman Conwell, who lived from 1843 to 1925. He was an American Baptist minister, orator, philanthropist, lawyer, and writer. He is best remembered as the founder and first president of Temple University in Philadelphia, and for his inspirational lecture, Acres of Diamonds. Mr. Conwell, being an orator, made money giving speeches, which he used to fund the Temple University. I believe Acres of Diamonds is considered great, not just because he delivered it over 6,000 times, but because it gives people hope that they too can succeed if they will use what they have right where they are. It was first published in 1890 by John Y. Hubbard Company of Philadelphia. Mr. Conwell was amazed at how this speech he just threw together, became the most sought after. I could not find out when or to whom the first group of people was that Mr. Conwell gave the speech to. I did find, however, where Mr. Conwell tells about giving speeches for 50 years, and as he looks around the audience, he wished there were younger people in attendance, because younger people, he said, had not gotten into any customs that they cannot break, or met with any failures as older people had. Mr. Conwell would arrive early to the town or city and talk with the people and get into sympathy with the local conditions. Then he would go to the lecture with those people about the subjects which applied to their locality, using logic, making points with the moral of the stories he told, first-person points of view with antithesis, anaphora, and metaphor styles of delivery. The speech, Acres of Diamonds, is delivered from a, or is derived from a story he heard from the guide who took him down the Tigris and Euphrates rivers in 1870. The guide began telling them about Ali Hafez, who owned a very large farm by the river. Ali Hafez was a rich man and was wealthy and contented. He was wealthy because he was contented and contented because he was wealthy. And one day a wise man came and visited Ali Hafez and told him about diamonds in Europe being found and how a handful he could buy the county with, and with a mine of them he could place his children upon thrones. Ali Hafed went to bed that night a poor man. He had not lost a thing, but he was poor because he was discontented, and discontented because he thought he was poor. Ali arose the next morning, and he sold his farm, and he set off for Europe in search of diamonds. Oh, but alas, Ali Hafed found no diamonds. Instead, he found wretchedness, poverty, and hunger, and in despair he cast himself into the sea, never to rise in this life again. His successor took the camel out one day into the garden to water it at the stream, and he looked into the water and he found a black stone with a shiny eye giving off the hues of the rainbow, and he took that stone into his house and placed it upon his mantle. And the wise man came to visit Ali Hassad's successor, and seeing the diamond upon the mantle cried, It is a diamond, a diamond, is Ali Hassad returned? And the old farmer said, No, it is not a diamond, and Ali Hassad has not returned. It is nothing but a stone I pulled out of the stream. And the wise man claimed, That is a diamond. I know a diamond when I see one, and that is a diamond. So together they went out to the stream, and they began digging around, and they started pulling out more precious gems than the one before. The moral of the story is, if Ali Hafez had stayed home, instead of becoming wretched, and poor, and hungry, and committing suicide in a foreign land, he could have owned acres of diamonds.